Your neighborhood Chevron gas station invites you to... Let George do it. Brought to you by the makers of climate-tailored Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Have a crime that needs solving? Have a dog that needs walking? Have a wife that needs spanking? Let George do it. That's the ad that George Valentine put in the paper when he opened his office several weeks ago. Since then, he's had many strange adventures. Now it's late afternoon. George has just stepped out of the elevator and is limping toward his office. Mr. Valentine, at last. Where have you been? You oh. took an awful long time for lunch, Mr. Valentine. Oh, Sonny, give me your arm. Claire, get me a chair. Why, you're limping. You're suffering. Oh. Cats, what's happened to you? Oh, it's my shoe. Help me get it off, will you, Sonny? What's the matter with your shoe? It's got a nail sticking up in it. Ow! Oh. Oh, that's better. Well, why in the world didn't you stop at a repair shop and get it fixed? Well, they'd expect me to take my shoe off, wouldn't they? Naturally. Well, I didn't want to do that. You didn't want to take your shoe off. Why not? Got a hole in my sock. <laughs> oh, golly. Here, Sonny, take it downstairs so that shoe's repaired while you wait, please. Okay. And tell him to be sure and get the nail out. Yes, sir. I will. Oh, my foot's killing me. Well, I'm glad you finally got here. Mr. Spencer's been popping in every few minutes looking for you. Mr. Spencer? You know, that lawyer in the office next door. Oh, sure. What does he want? I don't know, but he kept looking at the clock and asking when I expected you. George, well, it's about time. Oh, come in, Spence. What do you eat for lunch that takes so long? Well, it took me five minutes to eat, but an hour to limp back to the office. Uh, what happened? Were you in an accident? Well, oh, I... never mind. I don't want to hear the details. Unless you were killed and need a lawyer. <laughs> uh, sorry to disappoint you, Spence. <laughs> Look, George, I have a job for you. There's nothing much to it. It's a cinch, and there's a hundred dollars in it for you. Yeah? What do I have to do? Well, I have a client. If you don't mind, he prefers to remain anonymous. Oh, that's all right with me. Now, my client has $5,000, and he wants to invest it in Mazuma Limited. It's $50 a share. That means he can buy a hundred shares. Uh-huh. Well, where do I come in? You have to buy the stock in your name, and you have to buy it right away. The investment houses don't take orders after three, and it's two now. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Spence. Hold on. Now, I drew up this paper. Oh, you don't have to worry, George. It's legal. It says the stock is for my client, but that you're buying it for him. And just sign here. Yeah, but, Spence, I don't get it. Why doesn't your client buy it in his own name? Now, never mind. My client has his own reasons. Why don't you buy it? After all, you're his lawyer. I'm just doing what my client told me to do. Well, okay, Spence. It sounds all right. It is. You can take my word for it. Now, here's my personal check, George, for $5,000 made out to you. But snap into it. My client thinks Mazuma may go up. Oh, just leave it to me. Oh, fine, George. Fine. See you later. <laughs> yeah, what time is it, Claire? It's uh, just five after two. Oh, well, I better be on my way. Mr. Valentine, where are you going? To the Security Exchange Building. But you can't go now. Well, there's an investment firm there called Jellico and Bean. Mr. Valentine, Al wait. Al Melcher's a good friend of mine, and he works there. Be back soon. Will you please wait? What's the matter with you, Claire? Can't go with only one shoe. Oh, <laughs> forgot about that. Well, where's Sonny? Why doesn't he get back? Now, don't get impatient. Yeah, but it's five after two. Oh, here he is now. Sonny, quick, give me my shoe. I haven't got it, Mr. Valentine. What do you mean you haven't got it? Where is it? It won't be ready for another hour. An hour? Now, Mr. Valentine. But all he had to do was have a nail pulled out. But they're very busy, Mr. Valentine. But their sign says shoes repaired while you wait. Well, you didn't see all the sign. It says shoes repaired while you wait. And wait, and wait, and wait. <laughs> well, then I'll have to go with a nail in my shoe. Now, go get it. Mr. Valentine, you can't do that. But, Claire, you heard Spencer. Jellico and Bean won't take an order after three. Then why don't you phone them? That's a wonderful idea. Get them on the phone. All right. And I'll talk to Al Melcher. An hour to get a nail out of my shoe. I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Melcher, please. Why didn't you use their pliers and pull it out yourself? I didn't think of that. George Valentine calling. Just a minute, please. Here he is, Mr. Valentine. Oh, thanks. Hello, Al. Hello, George. Say, what's Mazuma Limited selling for? Fifty. Oh, fine. I want a hundred shares. Why? Have you got a tip? Is it going up? Oh, never mind. Now, listen, Al. I want to buy that stock right away, but I can't get over to your place for a little while yet. Well, why can't you? Because i got a nail in my shoe. You've got what? Well, can you put the shares aside for me? Well, now, George, you know I can't do that. It wouldn't be legal. I've got to have the money on the line. Oh, but, Al, I told you I... Oh, wait a minute. Can you put the shares aside if I send the money over with my office boy? Well, certainly, of course. But send him over before three. He's on his way now. Thanks a lot. Thank you, George. Bye. So long. 
Sonny. Mr. Valentine, do you think it's wise? Oh, it's safe enough. It's a check, not cash. Sonny, do you know where the Security Exchange building is located? Oh, yeah. I've been there lots of times. Good, good. Now go over there right away. Go to Jellico and Bean. Jellico and Bean? Uh-huh, that's right. See Al Melcher. He'll take care of you. Now here's the check. Jellico and Bean. That's kind of a hard name to remember. Now, Sonny, it's simple. Jellico and Bean. Think of, uh, think of Jelly Bean. Jellico and Bean, Jelly Bean. Hey, that is simple. Of course. Now get going. Okay, Mr. Valentine. Jellico and Bean, Jelly Bean. Oh, and pick up my shoe on your way back. Yeah, I will. Jelly cone bean, jelly bean, jelly bean. Candy. Candy. Now, what kind of candy was that? Uh, can I help you, Sonny? Cheapers, I hope so, sir. Well, uh, what firm are you looking for? I wish I knew. I forgot their name. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe if I looked at every name on this directory, it'd come to me. <laughs> That'll take a little time, son. There are 200 firms in this building. Yeah, but how many of them sell stocks? All 200 of them. Oh, suffering cats. But uh, I ought to be able to help you out. I, I've been working this building for 12, 13 years. And you, uh, you can't you remember anything about the firm at all? Well, uh, the name sounded like some kind of candy. Candy? That's right. Candy? Yeah. Let's see now, candy. Well, then that can't be Perry and Hunt. No, sir. Uh... Well, now, wait a minute. I, I'll bet I got it for you here. Uh, Gummer and Draper. Hmm? Gummer and Draper? Sure, gumdrop. Gumdrop. <laughs> Jeepers, that's it. What time is it now, Claire? Uh, five minutes to three. Oh, I wish Sonny'd get back with my shoe. My toes are getting cold. A nail in your shoe. Honestly, Mr. Valentine, sometimes I think you need someone to look after you. Why, Claire? This is so sudden. <laughs> Stop it. Good afternoon. Let George do it. This is Al Melcher. Let me speak to George, will you? Oh, just a minute. It's Mr. Melcher. Oh, I wonder what he wants. Hello, Al. Say, George, where's your boy? My boy? Yes, with the money. Now, wait a minute, Al. Do you mean to say that Sonny hasn't been there yet? Haven't seen a sign of him. We only got three minutes left, you know. Three minutes? Al, now wait. Don't hang up. Claire, Sonny didn't show up there. Oh, Mr. Valentine, maybe something happened to him. Well, if it didn't, it will. Maybe someone took the check away from him. I don't start imagining things. But he could have got hit over the head. Oh, sure, he could have got hit over the head, and he did. But that was when he was born. Mr. Valentine, I don't like your attitude. And I don't like your brother. Where is that kid? You've only got two minutes left, George. Well, wait a minute, Al, please. Now, don't hang up. Mr. Valentine, here's your shoe. Sonny! Sonny, where have you been? Sonny, quick, give Al the money. Huh? He's right on the... Oh, never mind, I forgot Hello, Al. I'll have to stop by in the morning. Okay, George. But, uh, what happened to your boy? Oh, well, you see, I had a nail loose in my shoe. He had a nail loose? (laughs) No, no, not him. Me. Well, then, why did that stop him? Because he's got a nail loose in his head. Oh, oh, that's too bad. Well, I'll see you in the morning. Well, take care of it, George. It can become serious, you know. What are you talking about? What can become serious? Your hangnail. Oh, goodbye. Now, Sonny, why didn't you take that check to Jellico and Bean? Jelly Bean. That was it. Sonny, what's the matter with you? Didn't you get there, dear? I forgot the name of the firm. Oh, great. All right, give me the check. But I haven't got it, Mr. Valentine. You haven't got it? Well, you... Now, Mr. Valentine, you stay away from Sonny. Well, what does he mean he hasn't got it? Where is it? I thought it was funny they didn't know you there, but they said they'd keep the check until you dropped in and ordered whatever you wanted to order. I couldn't remember what it was you wanted to order. Now, wait a minute. Who thought it was funny? Who said they'd keep the check? Who's got it? This firm in the Security Exchange Building. But which firm? Huh? Where did you leave the check? What's the name of the firm? Oh. Oh, Sonny, please, look. I'll get down on my knees. Now, don't tell me you don't remember. I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine. All right. All right, It's, it's, it's okay, see? Come on. We might as well go right over to the Security Exchange Building. Yes, sir. Do you want me to come along, Mr. Valentine? Yes, Claire. I don't trust myself. You'd better come along to walk between us. Well, just don't stand there, Sonny. Start looking over the names on the directory. Yes, sir. Can't you give us a clue? Well, it's too bad that elevator starter went off duty. I bet he'd remember. Oh, sure, of course. Everybody'd remember. Except you. I know it sounds like candy. That's why I was so positive I had the right one. Well, what about Martian fellows? Marshmallows? Well, I don't think so. I'm not very fond of marshmallows. 
Well, then how about Brader and Brittle? You know, Peanut Brittle? Nope. I don't care much for it either. How about Carr and Harmel? Carmel? No, too hard on the teeth. Oh, Sonny, we're not trying to pick out some candy for you. We're looking for the firm that has the $5,000 check. Here's Peppermint and Peppermint. Well, I'm pretty sure that's not it. Come on, Claire, we're just wasting time. Every name in this directory can be made to sound like candy. Then what are we going to do? Well, we'll go to every office if we have to. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Why don't we start at the top and work our way down? Because I'd rather work my way up than down. Now, come on. <laughs> Sonny, how about this office? Gummer and Draper. Oh, no. That doesn't sound like candy. Oh. Uh, well, here's Perry and Hunt. I can't make any candy out of it, but let's try it anyway. Yes, sir. Can I do anything for you? Oh, uh, look, uh, <laughs> this will sound a little silly, but uh, did this boy leave a $5,000 check here? He certainly did not, and it doesn't sound silly. Oh, well, he left it somewhere. All he knows is that the firm sounded like some kind of candy. Candy? Now, wait a minute. Why don't you try Gummer and Draper next door? Gummer and Draper? Yes, everybody in the building calls them Gumdrop. Hey, that's it, Gumdrop. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, so am I. But anyway, we got the check back. I'll be down a little late tomorrow, Claire. I'll go to Jellico and Bean first. Excuse me, Mr. Valentine. Well, what do you want? Now that we're back here at the office again, I was just wondering if it wasn't time to stop work. It's five o'clock, you know. Oh. Well, all right, Sonny. I guess you did enough damage for one day. Someone came in the other office. Sonny, see who it is, will you? Okay. Oh, hello, Spencer. Hello, Sonny. Spencer. Claire, don't let on that I didn't buy those shares. He might lose confidence in me. I won't open my mouth. George. George, did you buy the stock? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, of course. At how much? Yeah, well, fifty. Fifty dollars a share. Oh, that's wonderful. Then you got them right away. Well, <laughs> that's what you wanted me to do, wasn't it? Oh, I knew I could depend on you, George. It's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> uh, what's wonderful? I mean about Mazuma Limited. What about Mazuma Limited? Uh, nothing much, just that it went up three points, that's all. Oh, now, wait a minute, Spence. Say that again, and slowly. Yes, I just phoned. It closed at fifty-three. Our client made three hundred dollars already. Three hundred dollars? Yeah, nice afternoon's work, wouldn't you say? Why, what's the matter with you, George? You don't look very happy about it. Oh, I'm, I'm delighted, Spence. Delighted. Uh, I thought you would be. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, three hundred dollars. <laughs> Well, while George is trying to figure out how to raise $300, here's something for you to think about. It's always nice to know the man you're doing business with. So in case some of you still haven't gotten acquainted with a Chevron dealer, here's the kind of fellow he is. The man who stands behind the Chevron gas station sign is a chap with the good sense and hustle that it takes to run a business of his own. He's a likable sort, smiling and friendly, because frankly he knows it's good business to get along with folks. His customers find him accommodating for the same reason. They find him mighty handy with their cars, too. He proves that by carrying Chevron Supreme gasoline and RPM motor oil because he knows they're tops for performance. He proves he's a good businessman by honoring Chevron credit cards. He knows they're an extra convenience for motorists. Yes, on all counts, the neighborhood Chevron dealer is a good man to know. Why not drop in this weekend at the Chevron gas station in your neighborhood? George had to buy 50 shares of Mazuma Limited for a client, but due to Sonny's forgetfulness, by the time George was able to buy the stock, it had gone up three points. Now it's the next morning. Claire and George are in the bank, waiting in line. After trying so hard to save money, after slaving to earn it, now I've got to draw it out. I feel awful about this, Mr. Valentine. Three hundred dollars. I feel responsible for the whole thing. Oh, well, that's all right, Claire. What's three hundred dollars to me? Have I got that much in here? Oh, yes, you have more than that. Mm. Wish this line would hurry up. I want to draw out the money and get it over with. Mr. Valentine, Sonny and I will pay you back. Someday. Yeah, someday. Fifty-three dollars a share. Well, Claire, I just had a terrible thought. What is it? 
You don't suppose it's gone up again? Oh, no, it couldn't have. Oh, not so soon. After all, it's still morning. Yeah, but they tell me that when there's been heavy trading the day before, it sometimes opens at a higher figure. Oh, don't even think of such a thing. Mr. Valentine, that man ahead of you has a morning paper. Oh, I don't want to see it. Let's just forget about the whole thing. Let's just... Oh, well. Pardon me, sir. Yeah? Mind if I borrow your paper for a minute? Hmm? Oh, sure. Sure, help yourself. Oh, thanks. Now, let's see. Where is it? Mazuma Limited. Mazuma Limited? Is that a hot tip, buddy? Oh, no, no, no. Skip it, please. Mazuma. Oh, Claire. What is it? It opened at 55. 55? That means $500. Claire, have I got $500? Oh, gosh, you're next, Mr. Valentine. Good morning, Mr. Valentine. Oh, good morning. Well, drawing some money out this morning? Look, Mr. Stevens, how much have I got in my savings? Well, let's see. Um, You've got $503, sir. Okay, Mr. Stevens. I want to close my account. Taxi! Taxi! But why call a cab when your car is just down the street? We haven't time to get my car. I want to get down there while I still have enough money to buy those shares. Hey, taxi! Oh, here's a cab pulling up. He's letting someone out here. Good, good. Grab it. Keep the change, driver. Wait a minute, driver. Well... George, good morning. Oh, uh, hello, Spence. I just came down to do my banking. Well, we'll take your cab if you don't mind. Get in. Uh, Wonderful news, isn't it, George? Oh, you mean about Mazuma Limited? Oh, then you heard. Say, we should have taken my client's tip and bought some ourselves. (laughs) Yeah, I I guess so. Pretty good opening at 55. 55? You're behind times, George. Why? What do you mean? Spence, please, tell me. Well, since you bought it at 50, Mazuma has gone up 15 points, that's all. 15 15 points? points. And it may go up even more. He's made 1,500 already. Claire, 1,500. Oh, Mr. Valentine. Well, I'd better take care of my banking. See you at the office. Claire, get out of that cab. Let it go. Are we going to take your car, Mr. Valentine? Yeah, take it down and hock it. I wish Mr. Valentine would get back. He's been gone so long, I'm getting terribly worried. Where'd he go, sis? Try and get a loan on his car. Oh. Um, Claire, do you think maybe I'm a little bit to blame? Well, maybe a little bit, dear. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Mazuma went up to 65. 65? Oh, maybe I better leave before Mr. Valentine gets back. You stay right here, Sonny. Stay in... and stay in the other office, Sonny. Yeah, that's a real good idea. (laughs) Mr. Valentine. Oh, hello. Mr. Valentine, you look off. I raised a thousand dollars. Well, that's fine, isn't it? Seven hundred on my car, and then I sold a few things. What few things? What did you sell? Oh, what difference does it make? Why? What do you mean? Didn't you buy the shares? It went up again before I got there. Oh, no. I tried to get Al to take what money I had and sell him to me. I promised him I'd raise the rest some way, but... Well, it's against the law. Oh. I don't want to do anything against the law. Oh, no, of course not. Know any banks I can break into? (laughs) Mr. Valentine, it can't be that bad. Now, come on, sit down. You must be tired. Yeah. I went for a walk. Well, that's a good idea. Down by the river. Mr. Valentine! (laughs) It's still there. Please, will you listen to me? I have a suggestion. It's the only way out. Of course, I realize it may be a little difficult, but it's the best way to handle this. You mean the river? Oh, of course not. Mr. Valentine, go next door to Mr. Spencer's office and tell him the whole story. Believe me, it's the best thing to do. Yeah, well, maybe you're right, Claire. But how am I going to break it to him? Where will I start? With the nail in your shoe. Oh, yeah. Okay, Claire, I'll do it. I'll say... You see, Spence, I had a nail in my shoe. You see, Spence, I had a nail in my shoe. A nail? Is that what you came to tell me, George? Oh, no, I'm leading up to it slowly. I see. Well, look, George, meanwhile, I've got something to tell you. I want to let you in on something confidential. Yeah, well, what I have to say is a little confidential, too. As long as we're doing business together, George, why should I keep anything from you? After all, I wouldn't want you to hold back on me. Do you really mean that, Spence? Why, of course. Good, then listen. I had a nail in my shoe. Now, wait a minute. You listen to me first. 
George, I'm going to tell you the name of our client. Our client? Yes, you know, the man who owns those Mazuma shares you bought. Oh, him. I forgot all about him. Uh, don't tell a soul, George, but his name is Moose McClary. Glad to know you, I'm sure. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm sorry, Spence. I got a lot on my mind. Well, anyway, I had a name... Moose McClary! Well, it's about time. <laughs> Do you mean... You mean the gangster? Wait a minute. Don't call him that. Moose wouldn't like it. He's reformed a long time ago. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, at least he's reformed so far as the public is concerned. Say, you ought to see his suite of rooms at the State Hotel, George. Every place you look, there's a bodyguard. A bodyguard? And what tough babies. Of course, Moose himself is no gumdrop. Don't mention that word. What? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, Spence. Yeah, he's a hard man to do business with. You never want to cross him, George. He acts first, and then he asks questions. What do you mean, acts first? Well, let's just suppose that you did something that, well, that displeased him. Do you know what would happen to you? You disappear. Disappear? <laughs> For good? Forever. Forever? That's a long time. <laughs> anyway, I thought you'd get a kick out of knowing who he is. Now then, George, let's have it. What did you want to tell me? Well, it wasn't anything very important, Spencer. All I came to tell you is that I... I had a nail in my shoe. But, Mr. Valentine, you went there to tell him the truth. Why didn't you go through with it? After he told me our client is Moose McClary? Claire, don't you like me? Of course I like you. Just for the record, I like you very much. But what's that got to do with it? Claire, because of me, the Moose lost $1,500, maybe more by now. Do you think he's the type that'll say, oh, that's all right, just forget it? Just tell this moose person that you'll make it up to him. Tell him it may take a little time, but that eventually you'll pay him back. Oh, I can just see myself saying that. Clary's about six foot five. He has hands as big as that desk and a bodyguard for every finger. Well, then don't face him. Put it in a letter. A letter? Yes, why not? Hey, a letter. And you could enclose the money in the letter, and then you can... Leave town. Now, Mr. Valentine. Okay, okay. It's the only way out, I guess. I'll tell him that I'll work for him for the rest of my life. Which may not be for very long. Take a letter, Claire. Hey! Hey, you can't do that! Sonny, what's the matter? Say, what's going on out there? Valentine, quick! Some men came in and they're moving out all our furniture. Oh. Well, it's all right, Sonny. Don't try to stop. But, Mr. Valentine, why not? Remember I told you I sold a few things? Our office furniture? Well, what's the difference? I won't be able to stay in business anyway. Come on, Claire, take a letter. Jeepers. Okay, boys. This stuff goes to. Take it right on the typewriter. All right, Mr. Valentine. Uh, sorry, lady. We gotta have that desk. Mr. Moose McClary, State Hotel. Oh, sorry, lady. My typewriter. Take it in longhand. Here's my pen. Oh, all right. Oh, sorry, lady. We gotta have that chair. Mr. Yeah. Valentine. Sit on the floor. Oh, golly. All right, go ahead, Mr. Valentine. Dear Mr. Moose, this may come as a shock to you. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Valentine. Anyone waiting for me? Were you expecting someone, Mr. Valentine? Well, just the moose and a few of his bodyguards. Nobody's here but us. Oh, okay, then I'm safe for a few minutes. Then you mailed the letter. Yeah, last night. I addressed it and mailed it myself. He should have it by now. Um, why don't you sit down, Mr. Valentine? Oh, thanks, but where? Join us, on the floor. Yeah, looks pretty empty in here, doesn't it? Oh, you get used to it. Well, kids... Well, it was nice to know you. Now, Mr. Valentine, don't start that. Oh, we might as well face it. Kind of tough to say goodbye. I'm not saying goodbye. No matter what happens, I'm sticking. Oh, Claire. Thanks, Claire. I'm sticking too, Mr. Valentine. <laughs> Thanks, Sonny. What am I saying? Why should I thank you? Now, Mr. Valentine. Okay. No hard feelings, Sonny. Oh, of course not. I forgive you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you forgive me. Oh, I'm... I'll skip it. George! George, come on. We've got to get out of town right away. Oh, Spence, then you talk to the moose. You know about Don't it. Don't stop to talk. Come on, let's beat it. Well, now, wait a minute, Spence. He can't blame you. I wrote him that you had nothing to do with yes, it. but he claims I showed poor judgment. You mean in coming to me? Oh, he just carried out his orders, that's all. He wanted to buy 50 shares. How was I to know it would drop? Spence, wait a minute. 
You mean drop down? Yes, of course. It's down to 40 now. That means it's only worth 4,000. But the moose says he's got to have his 5,000 back. Oh, Spence, that's wonderful. Claire, did you hear that? Oh, Mr. Valentine, I can't believe it. Jeepers, we ought to go out and celebrate it. What's the matter with you people? Didn't you hear me? The stock's only worth 4000 and the moose wants his 5000 back. It's all right, Spence. He's got it. I mailed it to him in a letter. Listen, somebody's crazy around here, and I was all right this morning. Oh, oh you don't understand. You see, I had a nail in my shoe. Oh, for shirt. heaven's sakes, George, don't start that. <laughs> well, anyway, before I could get around to buying the shares, it started to go up. George? George, you mean... I took a loan on my car. I sold my furniture, but I still didn't have enough. Then you didn't buy the shares? Oh, that's terrific, George. What a stroke of luck. Sure, he ought to have his money by now. I sent it along with a letter. Letter? What letter? Explaining what happened. <laughs> I even promised to work for him for the rest of my life. Can you imagine that? George, you didn't. Oh, George, you don't. Now, Spence, I resent that. If you had to get it off your chest, why didn't you come to me? But to put a thing like that in black and white and send it to the moose... Why, don't you realize he'll hold it over your head? What do you mean? Listen, George, he's just the kind of guy who'll take you at your word. He'll make you work for him the rest of your life. Suffering cats. Oh, great. But, Spence, I returned his money. Sure you did, and he'll take it. But he'll claim the letter proves that you double-crossed him. I tell you, he'll use it for all it's worth. He can't do that. Uh, maybe you'd better get out of town after all. Of course, someday he'll catch up with you, but you may get away for a couple of hours. Good morning, folks. Here's your mail. Oh, good morning. Are you folks moving? Well, one of us is. Yeah. Better give me your forwarding address, Mr. Valentine, so things can catch up with you. Oh, no, you don't. I don't want anything to catch up with me. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, this letter came back stamped no such firm. Oh, well. The letter. Claire, Spence, it's the letter. Oh, Mr. Valentine, are you sure? Is it the one you sent to the moose? Yeah, sure, sure, of course. Hey, look. Here's the 5000 and the 1500 I raised. Jeepers, now you can get our furniture back. Yeah, but wait a minute. I don't get it. Why wasn't this letter delivered? Well, I told you it was stamped no such firm at that address. What? Let me look at the envelope. Oh, Mr. Valentine, you certainly must have been upset. Look how you addressed it. <laughs> well, how do you like that? It's addressed Gumdrops Incorporated. <laughs> George will be back in a moment. Meanwhile, out here in the West, we have a tradition of neighborliness. I guess we couldn't have grown so fast if Westerners weren't the kind of folks who were always glad to help one another. And if you'd like to see that neighborliness in action, just drop in at any Chevron gas station. All those cream green and burgundy stations are home-owned, run by local chaps who are making good on their own. That's one reason why your neighborhood Chevron dealer does his best to keep your car in good shape. The best way he can build a thriving business is to build goodwill with neighbors like you. So he's always accommodating, honors your Chevron credit card, gives your car top quality products like Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Yes, you're going to like the neighborly way your Chevron dealer does business. Drop in tomorrow and get acquainted. <laughs> Well, next week, George Valentine has a problem that's out of this world, and you'll probably hear something like this. I wanted to see you this morning, Mr. Valentine, but I was detained. You see, I just came from my funeral. Oh, I see. From your funeral? That's right. Quite an experience. Now, wait a minute. What is this? Say, who are you, anyway? I am the late Rufus Hamilton. <laughs> Chevron Gas Stations all through the West invite you to be with us again next week for another chapter of Let George Do It. Brought to you by the makers of Chevron Supreme Gasoline and RPM Compounded Motor Oil. Let George Do It, starring Robert Bailey as George, with Francis Robinson as Claire and Eddie Firestone Jr. as Sonny, is written by Pauline Hopkins, produced and directed by Owen Vinson. Others in the cast were Willard Waterman as Spencer, David Ellis as Al... Rena Craig as the woman, Jess Kirkpatrick as the elevator starter, and Herb Butterfield as the mailman. The music was composed and conducted by Charles Dan, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.